doesn't move that way anymore, and somehow or another we put stock in it. Amen. Thank God, but I've come by to tell you today that my God has not changed. Amen. What he did before, he can do again. He has not changed in one iota. Amen. Esther, the fourth chapter. I'm going to read from three different portions of Scripture. But Esther, the fourth chapter, all of this is going to be fairly familiar to you. You've heard me preach from it, others as well. Amen. Esther, the fourth chapter, beginning of verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Also, and my maidens will like will fast likewise, and so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Malachi, the third chapter. You don't have to turn if you don't want to, but Malachi chapter 3 Verse 6, amen. The Lord said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. That sounds like somebody you can put some trust in, don't it? Amen. We'll just stretch your hand this way and ask the Lord to help us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you magnifying you, glorifying you today. Lord God, lifting you up in this house. Lord, asking you for the anointing. Father God, that you would touch my heart as you've dealt with me, Father. Lord, help me to preach, Father, as a man from another world. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, help me, God, help us, Lord, to see your plan and to see, amen, what you're doing in this hour. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bolster our faith, strengthen our confidence. Father, in the name of Jesus, ready us for what is to come, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, for I believe it to be on its way. Father, in Jesus' name mighty name we pray the church said amen amen hallelujah amen mordecai told esther he said who knoweth whether thou hast come to the kingdom for just such a time as this amen and the writers in malachi and hebrew hebrews remind us amen that god does not and never has changed amen Thank God what he was able to do before he is able to do today. Amen. Thank the Lord. Uh, you know, we know that he is a miracle working God. We read throughout all scripture all of the things that he did uh, from the parting of the Red Sea, uh, amen, to the healing uh, uh, of the blind man at the gate uh, called Beautiful. Amen. All the miracles that Jesus did, uh, the ones that he raised from the dead, uh, amen, those uh, from whom he cast devils. Uh, amen. We read about all the miracles, and it's amazing to me that just about every church there is will agree that Jesus was a miracle worker. Amen. And that Jesus did mighty, mighty works. Amen. In his day. Amen. But virtually all of them will look at you and they will tell you that he doesn't do it anymore. That he doesn't move like that anymore. Amen. And amen. But we look back at it. Amen. And we look at the miracles that he's done. Amen. Both the things in the word of God and other things that we know about and have seen. Amen. And we sit and we pine away. Amen. Wondering where are the great works of yesterday. Amen. We think about the great revivals. Amen. Back in the 40s and the 50s where they'd set massive tents up and thousands of men and women would come.
come and the hundreds would come to Christ. Amen. We think about the great revivals such as the Welsh revival and others. Amen. Where they literally turned their communities upside down. Amen. I read one time about a three year revival. Yes. Three years that would kill some of us dead. Come on now. Amen. In the city of war, West Virginia. Amen. It got so tight and so hot. Amen. That it closed beer gardens in. Amen. Closed them down up to six counties away. Amen. Because everybody was getting saved. And everybody was coming in. Amen. And we wonder where the great works of God are in this generation. I've said it and you've said it too. Where are the healings? Amen. Where are the deliverances? Amen. Where are the mighty moves of God? Amen. Where are the devils being cast out? And the blinded eyes being opened? Oh, come on now. Amen. And we say all the time that it just takes the faith as of a grain of mustard seed. Oh, come on now. Amen. But I want to ask you the question. Amen. Why? Amen. Are we digging around in the ashes of the past? Thank God for those miracles. Thank God for what he's done. Amen. But why are we looking back then to find out what God can do today? Amen. I believe we should be looking for power in this hour. Somebody help me out. That's what I want to preach about tonight. Amen. Power in this hour. You see, I'm tired of hearing what God has done. Amen. I'm sick to death. Amen. Of hearing the war stories. Amen. Don't get me wrong. Thank God for them. Amen. Oh, but somehow or another, amen, we think talking about what God has done, amen, it's going to bring about a move right here and right now. Amen. Friend, let me remind you, amen, God did those things then because those were what was needed, amen, in that hour. Oh, come on now. Amen. I want to tell you, amen, God's not looking to do what he did. Amen. God's looking to do, amen, some powerful things now in this hour that never would have occurred at another time. Somebody help me out. Amen. We can look at what God is doing right here. Amen. And see, amen, that God has something in store that none of us can wrap our minds around. Oh, come on now. Amen. We were talking back in the fellowship hall, you know. We'd all done all the work, and Sister Shelby was about to come out and clean the sanctuary. Me and Tracy and her, amen, me and Tracy just sat down on the pew because that was about all that was left. It was about all we could do. Amen. And we got to talking. And Sister Shelby brought it up. Amen. She said, you know what? When I start thinking about it and I start praying about it, amen, she said, it's almost like I can see right there what God is going to do. But I know I'm not seeing anything of it. Amen. I said, I know what you mean. Amen. It's like you're close up on it and all you can see is that one little section right in front of you. But you can tell that there's so much more. Amen. That you're unable to to see. Huh? Amen. Because you can't get far enough back from it. Huh? She said, I just feel it. Huh? Amen. That God's got something big. Huh? Amen. That God's got something that we've never seen before. Huh? Amen. Big huh? in store for us. Huh? Amen. In this hour. Huh? Amen. Don't get me wrong. Huh? I don't believe this is a Mount Pleasant Church of God thing. Huh? I believe this is a last day thing. Huh? I believe this is a move of God huh? that is going to begin in spread huh, all over this land huh, in preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Huh. Amen. I believe we're on the verge. Huh. Amen. Of something we can't imagine huh, and something we can't comprehend. Huh. Amen. Huh. And God's trying to get us ready for it. Huh. Oh, come on now, saints. Huh. Amen. But we need Amen to take hold of what he's doing. Amen. 
right here, we can begin to see some recurring themes. Heman or I see some recurring themes. Heman, some things that keep seem to be coming up. Heman, as we talk about this. Heman, for almost the last eight months, we've been talking about God turning things on its ear. Heman, God telling me, pray the prayer. Turn my your church on its ear. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. And uh, uh, not knowing then, uh, amen, where we were going, uh, still not knowing what our ultimate goal is. Uh, amen. God began to deal with me. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Listen, uh, what I'm saying to you is this. Uh, amen. We've been looking for revival. But what I want to say to you is this. Uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I don't think we're looking at a revival. Uh, I think we're looking at revolution. Come on now. Well, you didn't get that the way I threw it. I pitched a whole lot better than you caught right there. Amen. I said, I don't believe God's trying to bring us a revival. I believe he's trying to bring us a revolution. Come on now. Amen. According to the World Net Dictionary, amen. Revolutionary means radical. Markedly new or introducing radical change. Amen. It means, amen, relating to or having the nature of a revolution. It means advocating or engaging in revolution or revolutionary behavior. Amen. I believe God, amen, is not trying to do a new thing in us. He's trying to do an old thing in us. Amen. But that old thing in us is the new thing that he has done. Isaiah 43, 15 said, I'm the Lord your, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. Amen. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it be. Amen. Spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Amen. Honey, God's not trying to do a new thing. Amen. God's trying to get us to get a hold of that old gospel. Amen that old time truth amen that brought about change in times past and it's still the same today as it was back then amen God is trying to give us a revolution somebody help me out amen we've talked about it you can't really see very far ahead amen when we look directly at what God is trying to do we're seeing such a small piece of it. Amen. And it's so large we can't put it all together. Come on now. You hear what I'm saying to you? Amen. We just can't wrap our minds around it. Amen. But listen. Amen. We've come far enough now that we can look back a little bit and see what God has done right here at Mount Pleasant. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. And using that, I believe we can see the trajectory that he's taken us on and where we're about to go. Amen. So far, we've seen God turn our worship on its ear. Amen. Come on now. Amen. So far, I mean, there was a time there, amen, where it felt like an old-fashioned pump well. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You get a hold of that thing and pump and pump and pump, and eventually you might get a little bit out. 
and sometimes that's what it seemed like. Amen. Way down deep in that shaft, amen, there's a piston. And that piston has an O-ring or a seal on it. And after an amount of time, that seal will begin to crack and it'll dry out. Amen. And it just can't pull the water up like it used to. Amen. But you take a cup of water and pour it down that well. Amen. And you begin to pump and that water will seal around that seal and begin to draw it up. Sometimes that's the way it seemed. Amen. Around here. Amen. But let me just tell you. Amen. Over the last few months. Amen. We've not been pumping. We've just been trying to catch all we can. Amen. Because it seems to want to run on its own. Somebody help me out. Amen. Amen. We seem to be worshiping. Amen. More than we did. We seem to be going deeper than we did. Amen. We seem to be getting hold of more than we did. Somebody help me out. Amen. God has turned our worship on its ear. Amen. We've seen people's commitment. Amen. Turn on its ear. Come on now. Amen. Over the last year, we've seen some folks simply say, I am not going to be what I was. Amen. I'm not going to do it like I've done it. Amen. Uh, You know what the clinical definition of insanity is? The clinical definition of of insanity is to do the same thing over and over the same way. The very same thing that has failed every single time you've done it. Amen. Oh, but what God has seemed to have done has touched some people's heart. And they said, I ain't going to do it like I did it before. I'm not going to try it like I tried it before. Amen. But I'm going to commit myself. Amen to this thing. I'm going to commit myself. Amen that if God's going to do it, I'm going to be there for it. Amen if the doors of the church are open, I'm going to be there. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And God has turned some commitments. Amen on its ear. Amen. We're seeing God. Amen. Turn our prayer lives. Amen on their ear. Amen. I can feel it. Amen. We're beginning to pray. And we're beginning to get a hold of the horns of the altar. And we're praying till we pray through. Amen. But we got to keep on doing it. Amen. We got to make that our modus operandi. Amen. Our natural way of doing things. Amen. I believe. Amen. That we're about to see. Amen. That God is going to take our faith and turn it on its ear. Amen. Up till now. I believe we've been like that man with the maniac son. Amen. Who came to his disciples. Amen. And said, can you cast the devil out? Amen. Sometimes that spirit gets on him and it throws him in the fire. Sometimes it gets on him and throws him in the water. Amen. And he said, I came to thy disciples. Amen. But they were unable to cast it out. Amen. Come on now. First of all, amen. Jesus said, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and by fasting. God's turning things. Are you listening to me? I said, God's turning things in the hearts and the minds of his people. Amen. But we have been in the place where this young boy's father was. Amen. Jesus said to him, all things are possible to him who will believe. And that man looked at him perhaps with tears in his eyes and said, Lord, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. Amen. But I believe we're coming on a time where we're going to see such things. Amen. Where there won't be any unbelief. Amen. For the Lord to help. I believe he's turning our belief. Amen. And our faith. Amen. So that when we see it, we just know it. Amen. When we see it, we just accept it. Amen. We're not going to have to be convinced. Amen. We're not going to have to be pushed. We're not going to have to be prodded. Amen. I believe we're simply going to believe it. And then we're simply going to see it. Somebody help me out. Amen. I believe that's what God is going to do. You see, there is faith. Amen. And a measure of it is given to every man. Amen. So that Jesus said, if you've got faith as of a grain of mustard seed, that's almost as small as I can pinch together without touching He said, if you've got that much faith, 
you'll say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And you know what? That mountain won't have a choice to stay there. It'll have to move. Amen, Peter. Amen, went out after Jesus and his disciples had come into town. Jesus coming into town, looked afar off and saw a fig tree. Amen. And being unhungered, he thought to find fruit on that tree. But when he got there, all he could see were leaves. Amen. It was not yet the time for figs, but it looked like it ought to have figs. Amen. And when he got to it, he found that it was nothing. It was barren. Amen. And Jesus turning away, he man cursed that tree and said, nobody will ever eat fruit from you again. And he turned and went his way. The very next morning, Peter went back by. And you know what he found? He man he found a withered stop just sticking up. He man where that tree had been, it was dead. He Amen. It was dead to the root. And when he came back to Jesus, he came back and cited and said, that fig tree you cursed, it's dead and it's gone. Amen. And Jesus responded, just believe God. Just have faith in God. Oh, that's all it is, folks. Amen. Have faith in God. Amen. Be bold enough. Amen. To see it in your mind's eye. Amen. Be bold enough to speak it as you see it and have faith in God and I believe that's where we're about to get come on now because there is faith and then there's a gift of faith 1 Corinthians 12 chapter 4 said now there are uh, there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits and to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues that all these work that one and the self same spirit dividing every man severally as he will notice amen that faith amen is listed among the gifts of the spirit oh, come on now amen this is not just ordinary faith amen this is a gift of faith. Amen. A gift of faith. Amen. Is a miracle working kind of faith. Amen. It's the kind of faith that somebody by, by the name of Smith Wigglesworth Amen. Had and used. Amen. Where they said he could look at a person's body and in his face eye he could see their ailment and he would attack that ailment. Amen. As though it was visible to everybody and people would be healed all around him. Oh, come on now, saints. It is a gift of faith. Listen to me. 1 Corinthians 12, 31, as it goes down, it said, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet so you I, amen, a more excellent way. Amen. Do you hear what he said? Covet the best gifts. When's the last time you asked God to give you a gift of the Spirit? Hello? When's the last God the last time you asked God, Lord, give me a spiritual gift? Most of us won't touch it with a ten foot pole. We're scared to death of it. Hello? Somehow or another we expect the preacher's supposed to operate in all those gifts. Amen. Somehow or another we expect Brother So and so, who is the you know, the the spiritual wild man in the bunch. He meant to be able to operate in all those gifts. No, God intended to give every man severally as he will. You may not get them all. Amen. But you should be cultivating spiritual gifts. Come on now. And you should be asking God. 
for spiritual gifts. Not just any spiritual, but the, the best ones. Amen. Paul said, Amen, that among the best of the spiritual gifts, Amen, is interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Why? Amen, because to speak in a known language, Amen, is to speak where all can understand. Amen, there's nothing against the, the move of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. We need that. But let me just tell you what else we need. Do we need working of miracles? Yes. Do we need, Amen, discernment? Yes. Amen, but right there, tucked in among all of it, it's one that we very often overlook, and it is the gift of faith. Amen, the gift of faith will make you able to believe. Oh, you look at me, and I know, I know because I've talked to some of you. Amen, you want to believe, but there's just something niggling in the back of your mind. Amen, that keeps you from believing. Listen, the gift of faith will eradicate that. Amen, you won't have a problem believing God. Amen, you will know it like you know that you're breathing. Amen, you'll know it like you know that you can see. And when you have the gift of faith, miracles will follow after you. Hello? We're not to covet uh, displays. Amen. We're not to covet or seek after signs. Amen. But Jesus said, these signs shall follow you. If we're where we need to be and we're doing what we need to be doing, we won't have to seek after signs. You won't have to run to every revival in town trying to find something. Hello? You, know, you hear me? Amen. You won't have to do all that. Amen. The signs will come looking for you. Amen. When you pray, God will answer. Amen. Amen. If the Lord calls you to preach, he'll work with you in signs following. Amen. If the Lord calls you to teach, amen, he can work with you in miracles. Amen. I'm talking about the gift of faith. I believe God's getting ready to dole out some gifts. Come on now. I don't know. I may be a little premature with this message. I don't know. That's what I felt the Lord deal with me. Amen. About Amen. God's getting ready to dole out some gifts. Amen. You understand? Amen. The second recurring thing that I keep thinking about is restoration of things lost. Joel chapter 1 verse 1 through 4 said the word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Pethuel. Hear ye this ye old men and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten and that which the locust hath eaten he man hath left rather the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Amen. It was devastation. There was nothing left. It was all gone. You hear what I'm saying to you? Amen. And for so many years, that's what it seemed like. Amen. But then Joel 2, 21 rolled around. Amen. And said, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth their fruit the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former and the latter rain in the first month and the floors shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your God amen that hath dwelt dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and then he tells us that in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh amen God's been dealing with me the things the devil's taken I'm going to give them back 
the days and the months and the years of despair. Amen. When you felt like there was nothing else in the field. Amen. God's going to give it back. Amen. Did you hear what he said? Amen. Not only is he going to restore all the years, amen, that have been devoured, amen, but he said that the floors are going to be full. Amen. That means there's been a wheat harvest. Amen. The fats are going to be full. Amen. A wine and oil. Amen. That means the grapes are coming in. That means the olives are coming in. Amen. And they're pressing it out. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And God is restoring in this last day. Come on now. As I said, God's not trying to do a new thing. Amen. God's trying to bring back the old thing. Amen. Uh, hey, charismatic, folk, charismatic folks everywhere are looking for a new thing. They're, I mean, they're running here and there. They're looking for new. Looking for something. There ain't nothing new. Jesus is the new. Salvation through faith in the blood of Jesus is the new. Come on now. Miracles that have happened. Amen. That can continue to happen. That is the new. Amen. But do you know what? Amen. In the church, particularly particularly in the States, we have forsaken that. You know why? Because that ain't easy. It's not easy to see miracles. You can't eat every meal and see people saved. Come on now. You can't eat every meal and see somebody healed. You can't eat every meal. Amen. And see chains broken. Amen. You can't. Amen. Do things your normal way and never pray and never see God and still have a revolution. Oh, come on now. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will restore. Come on now. Restoration of lost things. The third recurring theme that I see is what we read about in our scripture text. Amen. For some reason, I get the feeling sometimes that folks are still thinking this is just a random thing. Hello? I get the feeling sometimes that there are still folks right here that have witnessed all the same things I've seen and they're not sure about it. They're not sure if it's a thing yet. Hello? Amen. Listen, I know there's problems. I know God's still working on people and ain't nobody here made it to perfect yet. I understand that. But just like he's working with them, he's working with you. Amen. To get the rough edges off you and to get you ready to be what you ought to be. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. And, and, and I see what God is doing. And I see him moving. I see him baptizing folks in the Holy Ghost. I see him saving folks. Amen. And still I get the feeling that there are people, amen, that really don't recognize this as what it is. They're waiting on something else. They're waiting to see something else. And maybe what you're seeing is not what you've been praying for specifically. Maybe it's not in your house yet. Amen. Maybe it's not in your family family yet. Amen. But let me tell you, do you know what it means when you see it in somebody else's family but you haven't seen it in your family yet? Amen. It still means that he is not a respecter of persons. Amen. What he will do for the one, he will do for the other. You may not have seen it yet, but just hold on. Amen. You may not have grabbed hold of it yet, but just hold on and remember when you see this one and that one and that one receiving it simply reiterates the promise that it's coming my way. Somebody help me out. Amen. Mordecai said, and who knows, but the God's got you here, Esther, for just such a time as this. I want to say something to the Mount Pleasant Church of God. We've been here, Tracy and I have been here over 30 years. 
Petticoat 31 at our next anniversary. God could have done this at any time. In fact, I asked him the other day. I was sort of kind of being facetious with the Lord. Kind of being a little bit funny with him, you know what I mean? You got to watch that. You got to be careful. God's got a sense of humor just like we do. Don't believe it. I'll challenge you. Go home and look in the mirror. God's got a sense of humor. Amen. Look at some of the things that happen in your life, how ridiculous some of them are. And then remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God, amen, puts things in our life. Amen. Sometimes I, I really think he puts some things in our life so that we can sit back and laugh at what's going on as we come through it. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God could have done this at any time. And I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, thank you for what you're doing in our church. Thank you for the way that you're moving. Thank you for the folks that have come in and the energy that they've brought. Amen. Uh, I thank you for it, Lord. I said, but uh, wonder why couldn't you have done it when I was 25? Because now I've flipped those numbers around. I ain't 25 anymore. And now i got to keep up with these wild people. Whew. Amen. Makes it rough. Amen. But God could have done this at any point in time in the last 30 years. Why did he choose now? For such a time as this. We look around us and the world's going to hell in the handbasket for just such a time as this. We look around us, there's political turmoil in our country for just such a time as this. We look around us, amen, and we are at an all-time low for the number of people that say they believe in God for just such a time as this. Come on now, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen, God is doing this at just this time. Amen, because this is what he's planned. Amen, he wants to show the world around us what he's still able to do. Amen, all those things that all the people around you said God can't do anymore. Amen, God wants to show them in you just what he can do. Oh, come on now. Amen, to remind them and to show them I'm still God and I can do what I want to do, how and when I want to do it. Somebody help me out. We know God's a miracle-working God. We know that, he's, that he does all these things, and he's still saving, and he's still delivering. Am I looking for a world, worldwide revival? I, I, I don't know. I don't have time for it, really. Amen. I'd love to see a worldwide revival. Amen. But if I can just have revival right here, I'll be all right. Come on, I don't know what God's going to do. One of my preacher brethren, a missionary, Amen. Preached a message one time. He said, everybody's looking for that last day revival for millions to come in and get saved. He said, I believe we've already been there. We've done that. In the 40s and the 50s, when thousands upon thousands of, upon thousands of people got saved, that was the end time move of him bringing in the harvest. He said, now we're just gleaning the field. We're just struggling to pick up the little handfuls that are left. I don't know. I'd love to see God do a great Amen, worldwide revival, but I'm going to tell you something. Amen, if God doesn't do it in Paris and he doesn't do it in Moscow and he doesn't do it in Tokyo, amen, and he doesn't do it in Zimbabwe and he doesn't do it, amen, in Australia, amen, I'm going to be doing everything that I know how to do to have it right where I'm at. Come on now, I'm going to follow this word, amen, so that I can have revival, amen, in my household and in my church. Somebody help me out. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen, I want to see revival right here. Amen, if revival here me leads to revival, they're great. Amen, it can be like the wildfires that get started in California and burn millions and millions of acres. Amen, but God started here. Amen, God do it here. Amen, and move it the way you want it to go but we look back and we talk about what he has done we see how he has moved we reminisce about how he has worked miracles and done things in the past and we grow nostalgic for all of that I want to ask you a question what about now we may not need a Red Sea parted now Hello? 
We may not need an axe head to swim now. Amen. We may not need for somebody to throw a body in a hole and let it land, land on the prophet's bones and bring him back to life now. Amen. Oh, but I do want to tell you, amen, just because we may not need the same miracles they needed then doesn't mean we don't need miracles now. Amen. We need a, we need a power, amen, that is for this generation. Amen. We need miracles, amen, that are for this time and this place. Amen. Forget about what God has done. Thank God for it. But it just reminds us of what God can do and that there's nothing too hard for the Lord, in this generation, at this time, in your family, in my family, somebody help me out. So what do we need now? And maybe they didn't need them. There's an epic epidemic. And I'm not talking about COVID, although there's that. That's just something all to itself. But there is an epidemic in this world, in this nation, in this country, in this state, and in this city of depression. Hello? That they're taking red pills and blue pills and purple pills and this pill and that pill and all of these things for. Amen. So that just so they can cope, not even to get them up out of it, just so they can cope with where they are. Hello? They're not even trying to cure it. They're just trying to help you be able to tolerate it. Amen. First of all, let me tell you, Saint of God, depression doesn't belong to you. Depression is not a physical thing. Amen. It has physical manifestations. Don't get me wrong. But it's not a physical thing. Amen. It's not a mental thing. Although it has mental manifestations. Let me tell you what depression is. Depression is a spiritual thing. Come on now. Amen. Brought by the devil himself. Amen. To pull you down. And to draw you down. And to hold you down. Oh, come on now. Amen. But do you know what the word said? The word said the joy of the Lord is my my strength. Oh, come on now. Amen. I'm telling you, there's an epidemic of it. Amen. But I believe in just this hour and in just this time, God can help us see a miracle of restoration over this thing called depression in our church. Amen. And those around us in our city and our state. Amen. In our country. Amen. You understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. Amen. In this country, we talked, I, I, I mentioned uh, COVID. Amen. Almost a million people in the U.S. dead. Hello? I believe God's got healing in, in store for us. Amen. In just such a time as this. But I digress. Amen. In this country, there is another epidemic. Amen. That's drug use. Come on now. I mean, on an unprecedented level. Uh, there was a time, amen, where drug use was restricted to the streets. Amen. It was restricted to drug houses and, amen, all of these things. Amen. But it's not that way anymore. You understand what I'm saying to you? Oh, that's all still out there. Amen. The drug houses and the crack houses and the heroin houses, they're all still out there. Amen. But now, amen, you don't have to go there to get it. Amen. For the past 30, 40 years, we've been going to the doctor with every little ache and pain. Amen. In our bodies. And amen, they've been given it to us. Come on now. Amen. And now the epidemic is not hidden in the closet somewhere. Amen. It's not somebody that when you look at him, you say, oh, poor, poor fella, he looks homeless. It's not restricted to that anymore. Amen. The man with the three-piece suit. Amen. And the snazzy tie. Amen. Can be a drug addict in this hour. Politicians and presidents can be drug addicts. Amen. They don't have to go to CD joints to get it. Amen. They just call the doctor and the pharmacy will dispense it. Amen. And now, amen. And now they've got the bright idea to start throttling back and pulling back and holding back. Amen. You can't go just anywhere now. 
amen, and get those uh, those legalized pills. They won't let you have them. Amen. So what's happening? Now they're going out. Now they're going to the crack houses. Now they're going to the heroin houses. You understand what I'm saying to you? But I want to tell you something. Amen. In this hour today, amen, there is power to set them free. Come on now. There's power to set them free. I know we would love to see everyone that we pray for set free from that. And you can call it whatever you want to, okay? You can call it whatever you want to. You can call it an addiction. Amen. You can call it a sickness. You can call it a disease. Whatever you want to call it. Amen. Uh, but what I'm going to tell you is the Jesus I know, amen, is able to break the addiction. He's able to heal the disease. He meant he's able to heal the sickness. It don't matter what you call it. He meant that spirit still falls subject to Jesus and his name. And I believe in this hour. He meant there are, oh Lord help me. There are people that within a half a block of any direction of this building that are addicted. That didn't take the spirit to do that. Statistically, statistically, that that stands. You understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. But I'm telling you that God in this hour, amen, is wanting to give us power over that thing called addiction. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Listen, we live in an age, amen, where marriage and relationships are under attack like never before. Come on now. I mean, not only we've been in the age of disposable relationships, amen, for about 40 years, amen, or more. Amen. Used to, there was a stigmatism attached. It's not, uh, it's not stigmatized anymore. Amen. It's just another way of life. But I want to tell you something. Amen. God said, what God has joined together, let no man tear us under. Come on now. And yet, we are now about 60%. Amen. In, in divorce rates in the United States of America. Amen. Amen. But for such a time as this, I believe God wants to heal relationships. Come on now. I believe God wants to, wants to shore up and cure and heal marriages that are almost on the rocks. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. I'm talking about for such, just such a time as this. I'm talking about power for this hour forget about that hour that hour is gone but we're in a time now where we need power over these things hello there are people in this world that have been so traumatized by divorce that they're afraid to commit to marriage hello they love amen their, their uh, fiance or their boyfriend or their girlfriend they love them they would like to spend the rest of their uh, their life with them. But because of what mama and daddy went through, because of what grandma and grandpa went through, and because of all the hurt that all the children endured uh, because of it, even they're afraid to do it. Hello? And what, I, what I'm telling you is marriage, amen, is an endangered species. And if it keeps on going the way it is, it will fall extinct one day. Hello? Oh, but that, that's all right, because in its place, amen, now he and he can become a they. Hello? She and she can become a they. Amen? Yeah. Now it's all taken care of and it's fixed because a little Johnny and, amen, little Tammy can now have a mommy and a mommy or a daddy and a daddy. Amen? And, and that's all, uh, that's all, that's all, you know, taken care of now. Amen. What we need in this hour, amen, is we need God to sweep this nation. But let's not start with this nation. Let's start with that, with our church. Sweep our church. Touch our marriages. Help our marriages and our relationships. Amen. So that others can see what God is doing in us. Amen. God's already doing it right here in our midst. Amen. He's already changing people right here. Amen. That maybe not are on the rocks or have been on the rocks, but it's been kind of rough. Amen. But now, amen, they're beginning to show 
up for something else, something new, and it's beginning to turn that other head. Hello? I'm talking about power for this hour. And I could go on and on and on and on and on about all the things that we need power for now instead of looking for then. Listen, those things then are to inform us about our now. Those things then are not to tell us that this is the way God has to work. They are to tell us that when impossible tasks come up, amen, there's a God who can handle the impossible. With man it may be impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Hey, amen, if God can cause a virgin to give birth, he can restore a marriage. If God can cause, amen, a, a, a near 100-year-old woman to conceive a child, amen, and bear it to fruition, amen, then he can restore homes. You understand what I'm saying to you? Amen, what I'm saying to you is this, that God is wanting to give us power, amen, for what's going on right now. Amen, come on now to reach out and confront those things that are happening right now that maybe those in the Bible never saw, never even imagined, but we're living it. We're living it. Somebody come to the piano. I pray God give us power for the hour in which we live. Amen. Don't let us get so stuck up in what he has done that we forget he's a God. Amen. Over impossibilities. Amen. How many want to see God move in an unprecedented way in this hour? I believe we're going to. I do. I, I, I can't help it. I've, I've seen too much. I feel too many things accompanying what God is doing. It's not just what I see with my eyes. It's what I feel when I see it happening that's convinced me that God's got more to do here and that God's got something bigger. Hello? I don't really think the word bigger describes it correctly but I don't think huge would do it either. Stupendous, I don't think, would touch it. Magnificent, I don't think, would describe it. I'm not sure we have a word. Amen. Maybe that's what supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is for. I don't know. Amen. What I do know is God's got more. God's got more. Amen. We can't stay where we are. We've got to move forward. Amen. We've got to continue to move forward. We've got to continue to strive. Amen. Sometimes we pray things, we seek for things, and we don't see them right away. Amen. Do not be weary in well-doing. Just because you hadn't seen it yet don't mean you won't see it. Keep praying it. Amen. Just because you don't realize it yet don't mean it ain't coming. Don't give up on it. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You know what it literally means? Knock and keep on knocking. I promise you, if somebody comes and knocks on your door, you might not be very motivated. If you're like me, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm too tired. <laughs> Amen. We used to have a little girl in our neighborhood every Every couple of days, she'd come over. She she wanted to play. Now, this girl was probably about 12. She wanted to play with Lauren, who was about 18. All right, that's all fine and good, and Lauren will play with the best of them, let me tell you. Amen. But outside of the ones she knows right here and those at her school that she's, that she's teaching, uh, she wanted to play with just any 12-year-old. You hear me? She'd come to the door. I said, Lauren, she's here again. We'll just let her assume I'm not home. Sometimes we get that way. But I'm going to tell you, it'll change you when you hear somebody go. If nothing else, you'll go to the door and open it up just to get them to stop that incessant noise. That's what it means. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek. 
and just keep on seeking. You may not have found it yet, but keep looking. Amen. Keep turning over rocks. Amen. Keep looking in the dark places. Amen. Keep looking in the nooks and the crannies. Amen. Because one of these times, you're going to turn something over. Amen. And what you're looking for is going to be right there. Come on now. Ask and keep on asking. Come on now. Stand with me all over the building. As I've been preaching, some of your minds have been going to places and things and situations that we need power of in this hour. I wasn't going to touch them all. I didn't plan to touch them all. But God's touched your heart about some things that you know we need power of right now in this hour. I want to tell you, God is the God of power now. Hello. Too many times we talk about what he was. He told Moses, I am that I am. It means I am what I am. I am what I was, and I am what I evermore shall be. He has not changed. Amen. How many of you want power for this hour? Amen. Everyone that will come, let's gather in this altar. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. Find a place of comfort and begin to call on the name of the Lord. Maybe there's some specific things on your mind that you need power in this hour over. Amen. Call them out before the Lord. Oh, precious Jesus.